Good afternoon and welcome to your flip video on getting started with web pages and blogs. We have uh, three goals today. We're going to give you basic a basic overview of some of the, the things you can do with uh, with your creation tools for web pages and distinguish between web pages and blogs. We're going to walk through the tool that you'll be using to create your website tomorrow so that you can have an idea of how you'll get started on a website tomorrow. And then um, I want to give you some time to get your exit ticket done. Um, the exit ticket is your, your exit from your flip video, and it's what allows you to get started in your class tomorrow. So in order to get started, I want to make sure that we understand the difference between a web page and a blog. Both of them are used to convey information, and so it can be a little bit confusing, especially now, because web pages and blogs look very similar to each other. So this is a web page that we designed in the same tool that you're going to be using, Google, um, the Google Sites tool. And so this is the, the website for the Indiana High School Forensics Association. And the basics of a website, you see a, a menu structure, and the menu structure doesn't change a whole lot on a, on a website. So if I want to know what the rules are for speech and debate, I can click on manuals and constitution, and I get that. If I want to know what um, resources are out there, I think... We have IHSFA events and resources, and it gives you a links to different resources. So it's a, an organized page of information. And that's really how you should always think of a website, is that it's an organized page that gives you information, either information on the page or information somewhere else on the web that it's going to link to. The key to a website is that it's organized and that it has links. And that's true of most things on the World Wide Web. Now this is as opposed to a blog. Uh, a blog also has information and is also going to convey them, but the structure of the blog is fundamentally different because the structure of a blog, instead of being by topic or by category, like this one is where you see the calendar or the forms, the structure of a blog is always chronological. So when I click on this blog, this is the, the blog that I maintain that talks about the school and our BYOT program and the digital citizenship class you're in. You see that the last blog post I made was on December 10th. And on December 10th, it's actually a link to our Pinterest page where we have a lot of different tips about BYOT. The thing before that has nothing to do with BYOT. It's talking about Indiana educational politics, and you'll see that one was on November 9th. And if you look here, my structure for the blog is all based chronologically. So while you can search for information, you can get information, the blog itself is a chronological ordering and not done by topic. Websites static info, can be static or updated information, but it's going to be organized around topics or organized by a table of contents. Blogs organized chronologically. Everyone understand? Okay. We're going to be using a, a tool, or we'll use one of a number of tools. We're going to start with a tool called Google Sites. In order to get to Google Sites, you want to log into your AMDG account by going to gmail.com, um, by going to drive.google.com, or even by going to sites.google.com. And when you log in, you'll know you're on the AMDG site because you'll see this tag up here in the corner. Once you're there, um, let's dive right in. We want to create a site. So the first step to creating a site on Google Sites is to click the Create button. Now when it says I'm signed in as the wrong person, so I'm going to switch over to my AMDG account. That was my G Gmail account. So we're going to create a site. Now you can create it from a blank tip template or you can create it from a gallery. Most students choose to create from a gallery because the gallery gives you a lot more options. And just to give you some idea of the number of options that you have, there are a lot of them. So before you choose which of the numerous templates you want or whether you want to start from a blank, you want to ask yourself, what is the purpose of the website you're creating? Now, in this case, like in the case of the debate, speech and debate website, I'm giving you the purpose. The purpose of this website is going to be a collection of the work that you do in this class. It's going to be a student portfolio. So it's going to be a way to tell the world who you are, both as a person and as a student. 
And so your website should in some ways reflect who you are as a person, your personality. Now you also want to make it something that's appealing to other people, something that's easy to understand. So all of that should go into your thinking process. For me, I kind of like this classroom corkboard idea, the idea that we're going to kind of have notes and things that get pinned up. So I'm going to click on the classroom corkboard. If this isn't enough information, you can click on the preview template so you can see what it looks like. And if that works for you, if this is the type of site that you would want to have, then you click use template. If it's not the kind of site you want to have, then you would just exit out of here and go to the previous tab. I like this one, so we're going to use it. It's going to ask you to name the site, and our class is Digset period 3. And it's going to ask you for a location, sites.google.com, amdg.reboff.org, Digset. And you can select a theme. I don't need to select a theme because we already have one since I picked that corkboard theme. Under more options, you can put in categories or you can put a description. That's all optional. When you're done, you click Create. And Google's right now taking that basic information that you put in and loading up that template and is working on creating the site. And this becomes your site. And what's interesting is you should notice that this looks a lot like a Google Doc. It has the title up here. That title can be changed. It has an editing button that we're going to play around with in a second. It has the more that lets you add all sorts of tools to it that we'll talk about. And then it has the shame share button that you have on all of your Google Docs. So you could share it with me. You could share it with a friend who you want to give editing permissions to. So there's lots you can do with this site from this point. The first thing that I want to look at is the general structure of the site. And as we look at the general structure, we see that there's a home, activities, contacts, frequently asked questions, a photo gallery, and stuff of interest. All of this can be changed. So if I click on the edit page button, we see that up here we have an image, and that image can be changed. You can put in a picture of you. This placeholder information is perfect for a paragraph describing who you are, where you'd go to school, what you're interested in doing. Each of these tools down here give you the ability to look at a calendar that's in Google Calendar to put the stuff of interest post. If you look up here under stuff of interest, it's the same information. When I click on another post here, I get this. If I were to edit this page to say Ditch Sit is the best class ever, because we know that's true, and click Save, when I go to my home page, we see that that post now says that Ditch is the best class ever. So this section here is a collection or a link of the things that are found under the stuff of interest post over here. So the web page is, is infinitely customizable based on what you're interested in doing with it. Some of the things that I'm going to be expecting to see in your portfolio pages, you put it together, is I want your home page to be an expression of you. So I want a photo of you. I want a, a biographical description of who you are um, I want you to have a section on activities, whether it's clubs and sports that you're involved with here at Braboff or things that you like to do with church or in your community or at home so that people begin to get an idea of who you are as a person. Then under the, the idea of this stuff of interest, instead of us looking at stuff of interest, we might change that. And so we might edit that page. So instead of calling it stuff of interest, we're going to call it digital citizenship projects and hit save and now you see as soon as I do that my menu changes to say digital citizenship projects and now I have the ability to include a whole directory of the different projects that we've done so tomorrow what you're going to do is you're going to pick a layout that is going to be reflective of you and your personality. And then you're going to begin to build the content or the framework to hold your content in our class. And 
there's going to be two different things that we're going to go for. We're going to go for the projects portfolio, which is going to be on the web page, and then we're going to do a blog, which is going to be your reflections. We're going to talk a little bit more about the blogs tomorrow. So at the bottom of this page in the information section, you will have a link. The link under that information section is to our survey, and that survey is your exit ticket to get into class tomorrow. So be sure to fill that out, and I'll know who filled it out tomorrow before we start class. Can't wait to see you tomorrow. Bye.